Hello and welcome back to Pandemic Playground with Dave. So we're gonna continue our surviving per attempt, the wastelands, but first we're gonna have to do a walk of shame back home because we have no rover um, to drive back with. So we made it back to base and that was quite a walk, but it wasn't too bad. It was um, pretty much a 10, 12 minute walk from that economy base back to base or our base. Uh, so it wasn't significantly terrible. So what are we going to do today? Um, I don't really have a good clue of what to do. Um, there's two things I really want to do. One is potentially get more cobalt if we want to use or build things with um, heavy armor blocks. I don't think we have much cobalt left. Yeah, it looks like we only got 32 and we have 115 metal grids. So we are kind of out of it. I have a, a, a kind of a plan in mind for a, a mining system or drilling system. Um, or we could build Crane Mark II, which can be quite a project as well. So, I know there's cobalt in front of us, about 1.5 kilometers away, which building something that far would require to push a lot of material with me uh, in order to make it there. So, I mean, we can potentially just put all of it into this large cargo container and do that. Um, but it's still going to require a lot of parts. So, yeah, lots of kind of things to do here um, and to think about. But then there's also, it looks like a abandoned settlement three kilometers away that way. So that's another thing to, to do. But we don't technically don't have a decent rover to do that. So what should we do? Um, mm, I think ideally... We should start working on Crane Mark II because we definitely need that for uh, many things, such as uh, welding back, welding the house up a little bit more, and we can use that as a modular system where we can um, drill and grind things out too. So we should probably take care of that um, today. All right. So how are we gonna do this? It's gonna be. Probably a similar process as before. So what we need is going to be a ton of steel plates as always. And we can start with, um, let me see here. Where can we build it? Probably have to build it out here somehow. And I think we're going to build it with a few uh, kind of scaffolding and everything like that in mind. So let's just do that. Of course, we're going to use the yellow color here. Drop that down and we have the landing gear initially. And then we're going to pretty much kind of build out a bit of a scaffolding so we can use that as well. All right. So that's that. Okay. So how are we going to build this one out? Um, Probably similar to what we had before. We did uh, three block wide, so that's gonna be one, two, three, and then we had the wheels on the side. So, do we want to keep the wheels like here, or do we want to elevate it by putting like a combination of um, blocks like so, just to kind of elevate it a little bit more, um, so we don't have to be directly to the ground, which wouldn't be too bad to be honest, but. If we can make it as wide as possible, that's also a good thing. So, you know what? Let's just try it out. We never know how well it's going to be. So, 
we just place it this way and then we'll add our wheels um, the only problem with this now is that it's a bit on the low side so I don't think I can even plop on some wheels and we also got to think about um, what type of wheels do we want to put on here or right, do we want to put a 3x3 or a 5x5 what did I do last time I'm not too sure it probably was a 3x3 unless I'm wrong who knows at this point <laughs> um, but we'll figure that out soon so we're just gonna add these guys here there and we can add the wheels on the side here so we're just gonna get rid of this and this for now okay so that should be a fairly tall system okay let me think here a 5x5 five five wheel we definitely used uh, a 3x3 three three. Okay, it definitely wasn't a 5x5 five five. we didn't use that big of a wheelbase from what I can remember so off-row let's say this is the right side we can add here so we are perfectly yep we're perfectly aligned in terms of height so sometimes doing it this way kind of looks odd because it is stretched out a lot it's very wide which just works out for this type of system um, always better look if we can cover the suspension piece but let's not worry too much about that just yet We'll deal with that when it comes to it, if it, we're talking about design look. But for now, we'll just leave it as that. And yeah, we'll, we'll edit it as we go. Um, we just need to get the essentials on here, which is a wheelbase um, or the base of the whole entire um, rover itself. So we can bring this thing out. Do we want it to be this wide? Probably do want it to be this wide. So. We can bring this out some more. We'll weld up all this later. And we gotta decide how wide or how long we want this to be. So the last time we were able to fit four wheels on each side. So that was quite significant. So I think each three by three covers one extra block here. So we can add one here. So wow, we, we made it pretty long before then. Um, and we can continue to make it as long as that, which is not a problem at all, to be honest. Um, and I think it made a good tail system at towards the end, uh, which made it uh, kind of interesting in some ways. But I think what we can do is a decent front lengthwise, and then we can add a decent back piece to it. So we can kind of use the same deal we did before which was a bit of a tail system which looked kind of cool uh, like so and it helps to reduce the, the part numbers I mean or the material cost if we did do it like this again probably not the most ideal thing to do there we go and we can add a wheelbase here. Uh, we just want to kind of do the same design. It does look weird if we did it that way. Um, you know what? We'll leave that alone and build it. We'll leave the tail alone and build a wheel on, on the other side of it. So it kind of have some kind of counterweight in some aspect. But not really <laughs> at the same time. So let's put on... Um, before we do that, let's put on... A wheelbase here so we have a little bit mm, I feel like it's not long enough in some ways so if we put a wheel let's just put a wheel first because I want to see where it goes so yeah so where I have it is, is actually not too bad but this is not long enough for kind of where I want it to be so we should make it even longer than this to be honest and it looks like I need to get to the top here somehow all right so time to make a bit of a scaffolding here um,
Hopefully that's long enough. Okay, so I'm on top. Let's just get rid of these guys here. We'll get the rest of the stuff later. And I think I should be... Yep, there we go. Let's just make this as wide as we can. Um, probably... One, two, and let's just add one more. So we are... Oops, five, two, and three. So we are now... How long are we? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11. 11 long, which is not too bad. Um, I'll, I'll take that. And this is actually going maybe perfect um, in, in the terms of where the wheels are. This needs to go though. And if we add the right wheels now, here, so we have wheel, right wheel here, right wheel here. We have a fairly good long wheelbase and I think most of the weight is going to be in the back anyway so two wheels or four wheels in the back makes it better than the wheel in the front. If it comes to it we'll add another wheel right over here um, later on but I think it should be okay um, in the sense that we only need um, two wheel, uh, four wheels in the back and two wheels in the front. Hopefully. I could be wrong. As always. So let's put these guys here. This is the left side. Yep, left side. So we have the wheel system there. Okay, perfect. So that is our base of the um, rover itself. So now the good thing of doing it this way where the wheel is elevated a bit. We don't have to put a rotor right up top here as we did previously. We can actually potentially throw it inside here, which is actually a good thing. Um, that way we could spin something right along here. And let's see if I can do this a good way. So this is the wheelbase. We're going to say, okay, I think what I'm going to do is this actually. Let's just see how this goes. It's going to throw a rotor here. And of course, we're going to have to increase the height of it. But what we can do is so the question is where we're going to put the connector. So if the connector needs to attach a piece of it, maybe we should turn this into advanced rotor. So we can connect the connector in the bottom of the advanced rotor. So let's just do an advanced rotor just in case. And here we can do a conveyor junction uh, as the initial spinning part of it. And then we get some more parts really quick. Okay, there we go. So we got a conveyor junctions here. So that's perfectly fine. Now we can kind of surround this guy up with um, um, blocks if you wanted to. Should have probably put a battery first so it doesn't spin out like this. Um, but it's okay. You just maybe Deal with that in a second actually <laughs> this is not good because I can't get around it all right I'm back on the other side okay so we can connect these here now we have a bit of a square uh, three by three square for that we can make it a little longer if we want to which we probably would do um, just a tad I would say but Actually, you know what? I kind of get to need to get to the other side, so I gotta break that apart. And it's because we're on a bit of a hill, it's coming down that way. Okay, so why not add uh, a battery system below? So we need to add. Actually, do we want to add a battery system on the bottom? Um, battery system on the bottom doesn't sound like a good idea. So what should we do? Let's just say grab this guy. Um, we're gonna put a we're gonna have to put the the cockpit in the front here somewhere so maybe on this side so battery would be good on the bottom I guess yeah I, I think a battery in the bottom would be perfectly fine so we'll put the battery here. And if it's not fine, we'll we'll kind of deal with that later. So, um, 
it's gonna take some time for me to weld these up so just gonna have to bear with me and run back and forth for a little bit all right so the crane is done it's not the prettiest thing in the world but it is kind of operational it's not too too bad so let's kind of walk you through this um probably have to get a little spectator mode for you guys so you can kind of see the design of it all right so unfortunately it's nighttime uh, i'm not gonna wait through the day so basically it's similar to the old crane except this time we elevate the wheels a little bit more uh, with these angled or slope blocks actually it doesn't look that great but <laughs> Um, it, it's it's functional for the most part, so it's not too too bad and the rotor is the advanced rotor right here inside So it's kind of you know lower than the previous one But that kind of forced me to put a cockpit right here in the front which makes it look really really bad and the other cockpit is housing uh, a programming block for the script of the uh, cockpit piston hinge and rotor controls and then I have some conveyors to all link up to the tip here of the welder so the only thing I forgot to do is add some cargo containers here on the side so you can easily add them here so for an example boom there we go so we got our cargo containers here so we can um, house more materials if we need it and so forth so we could also build it upwards if we wanted to since it's not going to collide with the pistons here so unlike the old crane Instead of using um, slope blocks going diagonally, I decided to attach a hinge and a piston with another hinge into this double piston section here, which this part is similar to the original, uh, which is adding this little angle to it so we can move it up and down um, without having the weak point being those slope blocks. Those slope blocks can break fairly easily, if anything. These pistons last a little longer or hits a little harder um, without breaking. So we have added that there. So, I mean, I think I may have made this thing a little too long to make it look decent, but it functions a little bit better than in the old crane. So I actually don't really like the look of this crane too much, but it is fairly functional. Um, so yeah, so after all this up and down motion here with these three pistons, so these three pistons act mainly as our up and down system. Um, it all, it's all grouped together for our um, script. This one here is going to move forward a little bit more. And then it's connected to these three hinges here. So I use the three hinges with these tubes and the conveyor junction so that we can have a heavier system in the front and be able to move it up and down um, relatively easy. These three hinges are here and being controlled by my up and down motion of the mouse. Um, this up down here for these three pistons and the torqueless hinges is gonna be controlled by um, C and space. This one here, uh, it's gonna be a little odd, but it's gonna be A and D. And this one here, the last piston is just gonna be W and S. Um, so that way we have it all kind of controlled or under control with the program block and the script itself. So once again, um, in order to make this work easily, we do have the cockpit piston, rotor, and hinge controller script on. And as you see here, what I did is basically add in the AD for the piston going um, forward for the hinges, the three hinges. And then this piston is moving um, forward and backwards. That's after the three hinges. And then of course we have um, C in space which is those three pistons going up and down. And then we have um, the three hinges and that's gonna move up and down using my mouse up and down. And lastly, we have the advanced rotor where we can move the whole entire thing left and right. With all that said and done, we can hop into our cockpit here. And as you see, we can move the three hinges up and down. We can move the advanced rotor left and right. Um, we're gonna do forward with W. As you see here that so we can get some extension there and then the, again the odd one is this one here a and d which brings that one up and down or forward and backwards so that one is a little odd but we're running out of keys um the only one we have left is q and e 
So with Q and E, honestly, I could have added a new uh, or another hinge where the welder is to get some more accuracy so we can move that up and down. But it's going to be a little odd in terms of control because the directional of A and D for forward and backward, it just feels awkward to me uh, or, or feel, just feels kind of weird to be honest. But we can move this thing easily left and right. We should add some landing gear lockdowns on this thing too. But once again, it's not the prettiest thing in the world. And if we spin this guy long enough, actually it doesn't even go too far. So I could add a bigger piece or a nicer design right around here. Because the this whole thing is never going to go past this battery over here as well. So to kind of just spin it around a bit without hopefully not break anything. Yeah, definitely doesn't even touch the second... Um, battery so we can add a a better design or look to that top portion instead of leaving kind of like naked but anyways uh, moving up and down sea and space is going to be those three pistons that we mentioned before right here so that brings it down and this one brings uh, well brings it backwards and this one brings it forward as much as possible and of course we did add a bit of a limit to that bottom hinge and I'm talking about this one here because without that limit what is probably going to happen is that this thing's going to be too heavy eventually and it's going to come down crashing on that hinge itself um, so it might break it so I just wanted to put some precautions there so this crane system not the best design functionality it, it seems to work pretty well and hopefully it doesn't break anytime soon but it looks like we got a decent little crane system here and um, we could definitely design this a lot better uh, sooner or later. I did discover that there's a bit of an issue with all this system which is going to cause a little bit of clang which is going to be this here. If I retract everything like say here well it did it before but the system just tends to lean forward a bit which is a bit odd. It's not doing it now, which is good, but I guess it's a kind of a give and take kind of situation um, if it is going to do it. So that looks perfect. That's not too bad. So this thing is probably going to work out pretty well. Um, the only thing I haven't tried out yet is actually go for a test drive. We are looking pretty good. Did I make it too wide that we can't climb up this thing? No, we should be okay because we do have another thing and that's towards the bottom and that is the connector so this is the connector that's likely going to connect into this connector here to get material um i might need to put this thing a little lower actually so i'm not sure if that's gonna crash into it there's a chance that it might kind of hit it so i gotta figure that out a little bit or potentially find a different system where maybe i could put a bucket or collect instead of connector you drop materials into here but of course that takes more time to do than actually connecting into connector one because we also need to charge up so we can kind of see if it works out um it might not but i think we can drive this guy pretty well in terms of its maneuverability so we can yeah it, it's okay for the most part it drives a little bit better than the old crane the old crane was always like wobbly and everything like that this one not as much so that's a good thing so what we can do is see if we can drive up to and the problem i'm gonna see here is that we can go over this connector fairly easily but uh, we have a problem because if we go too forward we hit the cargo containers there and we're not we are not reaching that connector whatsoever so we need to extend the connector a little bit more back on the on the base itself but i think we are okay in terms of um, the height so basically we could just do height offset this way and we're off by just a tad one block so we can move the connector here or to be on the safe side, let's move it over here. Then we can connect into the base that way. So 
we can take care of that right now and hopefully get this done as soon as possible. All right, so that's all set. So now we can kind of back up the system just a little bit or the crane system, uh, crane just a little bit and we should be able to connect right into our base, get this thing recharged and everything like that as well. So oh, we didn't even park this thing. <laughs> okay, so we are not lined up whatsoever. So we got to get that kind of lined up here. Ooh. I do like the fact that I made this um, a little longer in terms of the wheel base. So it is balancing out pretty well, even though it's not. Um, yeah, it, it drives a little better and it's balancing out. It's not too wobbly as the old one. And it looks like we are able to connect here. So let's go connector and do a switch lock. The only problem I see here is the top crane portion, the spinning part, can't lock in as we did with the last crane system. So if we hit and lock in here we can recharge and everything's working out pretty smoothly and that's not too bad so we can get as much material as we can to these little cargo containers and then um, start welding up things and eventually grind things up and and or use it as a drill system honestly I don't think I want to use that drill system um, the previous crane was able to do it but it just causes too much issues I'm gonna end up breaking the whole entire system so we're going to keep this more of a grinder slash um, welder. So we got to solve the issue of that using uh, our modular system with um, potentially projectors. Or honestly, we just make another crane <laughs> that has the grinders attachment instead of the welder. So there's that also. Um, and what I'm going to do, if I do need materials to drill and mine, I'm just going to make a mining station. Um, and then use these things to weld it up, grind it down if necessary. So that is what I'm going to do next. And that's because we're going to have to get some cobalt right over there. We can um, get as much materials as we can, throw it in these cargoes. And then travel over to that section there. Build out the uh, little mining system, the drill station. Which I have a pretty decent idea of making one that's kind of interesting. Uh, with a limited amount of drills that's going to cover a large area but of course it's going to be very very slow in terms of the operation of it itself um so yeah so this crane system again not the most prettiest thing in the world or well designed look but it is fairly functional we have our um good articulating arms and it does stretch out pretty well so when i say stretch out pretty well I mean it can reach pretty far in terms of kind of the height of it and the length of it so honestly if we wanted to we can pretty much reach the refinery right in front of us if we really needed to get to that point where we can articulate down and pretty much um, weld up that system there and of course we can even go further by stretching out forward and if we wanted to we can also go even further forward that way so lots of different angles here I think if I had to what I would do is add another hinge system or hinge block right where the welders it are so I can articulate that even more accurately so everything seems a little bit wobbly I think I need to add shared inertia to some of these pistons all right so i added the sheared inertia so hopefully that holds up pretty well yep looks like it's doing okay still a little bit wobbly it's not as great as the other crane when it comes to this whole wobbling um of it, of it. i think what i want to do is is get rid of the sheared inertia for the up and down pistons because I think it, it's gonna act a little bit better if it's not on their shared inertia for whatever reason it, it, yeah it, I think it's just too many things involved in it so having it not on their shared inertia seems to work out a little bit better it's still a little bouncy here and there but we can pretty much control it and throw it up to this front it's still a little bouncy but we can always articulate the arm this way so uh, it, it, it's 
It's, it's a bit too bouncy for me, to be honest, still. So let's see if we can change that. Alright, so I attempted to increase the torque a little bit on the hinges that's connected to the three pistons um, that's going up and down. And that didn't seem to really do too much, unfortunately. So... Okay, so let's play. I played around with the torque braking or the braking for the hinges, and that seems a little bit better. It, it, it stops the wobble a lot faster than it did it before. So if we looked at these hinges, we did the brake. We could probably do the brake torquing a little bit more. Let's just not get in the red. Let's get right right around there, or or about this number here, and we should be okay. Okay, so hopefully that kind of takes care of that. A little bit wobble, not as bad. Okay, so that's not terrible. We can leave it as that. So it, it, it does have a bit of wobble there, as you see. Not ter eh, it's okay. Uh, honestly, for whatever reasons, I, I do kind of like the old um, screen system that I built. It, it wasn't as wobbly as this here. Um, so that's a bit interesting. The only problem is that it wasn't really well balanced or it didn't have a long wheelbase like this one. So it, it kind of didn't work out as great too. And it had that weak point of having slope blocks there too. I mean, what we could do is use heavy slope blocks in its place, but that's gonna, still going to make it a little front heavy. I know the suggestions um, put a large cargo container in the back so then we can um, level out the rear of it. Which is, is a decent idea, um, but for whatever reasons, again, the wheelbase wasn't long enough and getting off this ramp would kind of flip it over, which we did not want whatsoever. Uh, but yeah, at least we got the crane done um, for today, so we can continue to use this to build the house or weld up the house. Um, I think we have more than enough materials to finish up the weld, but I'm not sure if we have enough materials to kind of complete the second floor. So... What I'm definitely going to do next is start gathering that cobalt that's over there and also gather the stone so that we can refine it for more materials as well. Ideally, that's why I created the crane so I can build that drilling station. And again, stay tuned for it because it's an interesting way of making a drill system that I've actually never done, but I've seen it done before. So I just want to give it a shot and see how that kind of works out. But hopefully you guys you did enjoy this episode where I recreated the crane but kind of made it better but uglier but whatever. If I had more time I would probably design it out better. So I mean once eventually we're going to clean it up a little bit too and make it look a lot better. But hopefully all this wobbling can be fixed. Um, so of course leave some comments down below if you have any suggestions on kind of correcting this whole wobble. But eventually, with, if it keeps wobbling like this, I think it's going to be um, su summoning and su submitting this to Lord Clang. Alright, so as always, if you made it this far in the video, please hit that thumbs up, like the video. And if you haven't done so yet, consider subscribing to the channel and also hit that notification bell to be alerted of upcoming videos. We always enjoy reading your comments. Feel free to drop one right below. And of course, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.